I mean, that tension is, is, is real. That's, that's the paradox on which, as you know, the international system has been built, that we know we can't trust states, which is why we have international treaty. We know we can't trust national laws and so forth. That was the lesson of Hitler, is you could just legalize extermination. So you have to have higher laws, and yet what do we do in 1945? Of course, we, we rely on the very same states we know we can't trust to enforce those laws and to comprise those international institutions. But to think, I mean, you weren't suggesting this, but a lot of people when they talk about UN reform and or the kinds of institution building you're describing in the, in the context of early warning or, or standing army, that that can be done at an international level. It, it, it can. It, it, it has to be done un, un, unless we change our whole order, which you know would be welcome, but isn't going to happen anytime soon, given who has the power and who have the guns. Um, it has to be done by convincing those building blocks, those nation states who comprise the UN, that it is in their national interest to give something up in the short term in order to get something back in the long term. The way that the UN will ultimately find a constituency in this country is when we do as we're doing now, finally, around global warming, and we understand that you can't deal with transnational threats unless you strengthen transnational institutions. You can't, just as a structural matter. Counterterrorism provides an opportunity to, to reintroduce Americans to international institutions because we cannot get cells you know, in, in 111 countries on our own. And I think actually, paradoxically, or, or, but the, the loss of faith in our competence creates an opening and a moment to potentially actually invigorate the conversation about you know, a different relationship to international institutions. 